Many people incorrectly think that Canada, unlike the United States, does not contain any active volcanoes. Yet, if that is the case, why does this young cinder cone exist? Or what about this highly obvious valley-filling lava flow? Both of these aforementioned features are less than 10,000 years old and represent small portions of a much larger and still active volcanic field known as the Wells Great Clearwater Volcanic Field. During the last 10,000 years, this volcanic complex has erupted four times, resulting in 30.72 square kilometers or 11.86 square miles being covered in a fresh layer of lava. The most recent of these eruptions occurred a mere 474 years ago in the year 1550, emplacing this beautiful cinder cone known as the Coastal Cone in a mildly explosive eruptive episode. Yet, as shown by the presence of the absolutely stunning Helmecken Falls, the fourth tallest waterfall in Canada, which cuts right through several layers of thick basaltic lava flows in place between 200,000 and 25,000 years ago, this volcanic field has been active for a fairly long time. In fact, volcanism has been intermittently ongoing in this very spot for well over 3 million years. This is the story of Canada's most unusual volcanic field, which every few years is the site of low-intensity, presumably volcanic, earthquake swarms. The Wells Great Clearwater Volcanic Field is located in southeast-central British Columbia, where it begins 15 kilometers north of the town of Clearwater, from which half of its name originates. This volcanic field consists of several dozen monogenetic vents, meaning they erupt once and then never erupt again, spread across an area of 1,720 square kilometers. A disproportionate number of these vents were originally located in or at the edge of prior valleys which existed, suggesting that they can owe their existence to an extensional environment that allows mantle material to upwell and intrude through faults which naturally mark the edges of valleys, occasionally erupting onto the surface. Some papers even consider this field to be an extension of the more massive Chilcotin basalts, but whether or not this is correct, their origins are quite similar. The vast majority of vents in this field formed underneath glaciers and are thus great examples of subglacial volcanoes. More than 250,000-year-old vents such as McLeod Hill, Gouge Hill, and Mosquito Mound represent highly eroded toyas, which originally had a flat top at their summit with steep slopes surrounding them. These flat tops can still be somewhat seen today, but hundreds of thousands of years of repeated glaciations and glacial floods have greatly smoothed their appearance. McLeod Hill in particular is quite interesting as it seemingly erupted during a brief colder interval one million years before the Pleistocene Ice Age began, forming during a narrow window when the planet temporarily experienced Ice Age-like temperatures. This means that McLeod Hill was glaciated dozens of times, including 3.25 million years ago. There is also another type of subglacial vent known as a subglacial mound, which is essentially a toya that only underwent the first of three stages necessary in its formation, with one example being Pyramid Mountain. During repeated glaciations, thick lakes developed in these valleys, meaning that underwater volcanic vents did erupt, creating unique pillow basalts which near instantaneously cooled upon their emplacement. The first of four Holocene eruptions occurred once glaciers retreated in 8000 BCE, forming the Spanish Lake Cindercone and Three Mars, the latter of which formed in highly explosive eruptions. The Dragon Cone formed next in 5610 BCE, erupting on the ridge of a glacially carved valley with lava flowing into the valley below and traveling up to 19 kilometers away. Around 1000 BCE, the three cones of the Flower Mill Cones formed in a moderately explosive eruption, resulting in the emplacement of an 11.1 .1 square kilometer lava flow. The most recent eruption occurred at the Coso Cone in the year 1550, creating an eastward-traveling lava flow along with the 176-meter or 577-foot-tall cinder cone. The eruptive rate of the Wells Great Clearwater volcanic field appears to be highly variable, but in the last 20,000 years has erupted an average of once every 2,500 years, which is part of the reason I personally classify this complex as a moderate threat volcano. As a final note, I would like to thank my new patron Miriam Folkingham for supporting this channel.